Hello, everybody. Wednesday, June 9th, 2021. What's going on today? I'm out here before it starts raining again. Yep, I'm on here to let you guys know about all that FICO crap. So, a lot of people don't know what it is, and you know, because I just got approved for this house and it took a decade to get my credit where it's supposed to be. It just takes time. A lot of people think you apply for a credit card or get a secured card and you start applying for credit afterwards and then you wonder why you're getting denied. Well, payment history is a key. You have insufficient payment history or insufficient credit when you open a new account. It's got to be aged for at least two years, 24 months or longer. Then they put a credit mix in the game like loans credit cards mortgages car loans student loans all that's like a mix they want to see all that mix that's why i got like 50 accounts in my credit report closed and open but majority of them are closed but you know they stay on there for 10 years after you pay off a car it stays on your report for 10 years so and hard inquiries are negative marks so when they see a lot of hard inquiries on your report they won't they won't approve you because they think you're desperate I hear them cicadas out here. They'll think you're desperate. So they only want to see a couple, maybe four at the most a year. That's it. And they stay on there for two years. So basically, if you apply for a loan today, two years from now, it will be removed off your report. And they do weigh down your score when you get a lot of them. You hear that saying, if one denies you, they all will. They sure will. If one, if one company, will, a lender will deny you, they all will deny you. So... Another thing, too, is when your credit score changes, the credit bureaus alert all of your lenders to let you know, hey, he's risky, he's got a late payment, or he missed a couple of payments. Then the lenders will automatically, well, some of them, a lot of this happened during a the pandemic, they closed your account out or lowered your credit limit. It happened to me because the processing facility, one of my credit cards was shut down because of Texas. The processing facility was in Texas and the payment facility. No electric, the ice storm that happened in February, I think. February, this past February, ice storm. They couldn't go to work, no electric. How can you work using a computer to process payments? So they tagged the payments as late, but it took them 90 days to fix it. But in the meantime, their credit bureaus was worried to my other creditors. Hey, he's got missed payments. Slash his credit limit, closes account out, closes account out. That's what they were doing. So yeah. So, I fix all that. I paid all them credit cards off, and I mean, I'm, I cut them all up, and I'm not even using them. They'll eventually close out after a couple years. So, they close your account out if you don't use it for two years. They close it out for due to inactivity. Yeah. If you don't, they say, but they figure we're not making no money off this person. They're not even using their card. We're not charging any interest. They're not using their card. So, we'll go ahead and close their account out. That's what happens if you don't use your card in 24 months, two years. Close due to inactivity. Because credit cards are traps. They're traps. It makes sense because when you go to a store with a credit card, you tend to buy more. Or, yeah, them shoes are $100. Let me buy them shoes. It's like, it's like a kid in a candy store, they say. You go crazy. Then you rack up debt. Then the, the, the credit card companies profit off your mistakes. Like the pandemic. The, people, the mail was running real late there for a while. That's like months ago. Took like 90 days for a bill to get mailed. <laughs> yep. People were getting Christmas cards in uh, March. And they were mailed out in November. Took like five months to get them, four months to get them. That's how bad the mail was. My credit union sent me a letter. And I think it was postmark on the stamp up there like December 20th or something. And I got it like in April. So, yeah. December, January, February, March, April. Four months to get it. And that's how the credit card companies are cashing in if you mailed your payment because they profit off your mistake. They'll tell you you should have mailed it earlier. But I told them I mailed it the day I got it. And it took like three months for you guys to get it. So it's not my fault. And plus your payment facility was not was shut down. So even the credit card company, the payment facility was shut down for a while, like a month. They even lowered my credit limit because they got alert from the credit bureau saying, hey, he's risky because he missed a couple of payments. And it wasn't no fault of my own. I wouldn't have known if the lady wouldn't spill the beans when I kept on calling them. They're like, 
our payment facility was shut down because of the ice storm. I said, bingo. I said, I said, refund all my late fees then. You guys charged me like $90 in late fees. And they refunded them to me, but it took them like four months to fix that uh, late payment. It was a nightmare. They sent me letters in the mail saying that uh, I should have paid online. Like I knew the ice storm was coming. You know what I mean? Bunch of, but it's weird, you know. You should have paid payments online. I, I mail my payments because... What happens when you go on there and you create accounts online with your credit card companies or banks? You got you give them your checking account or savings account information for auto pay. If they have a data breach, it becomes your problem, not theirs. They're not held accountable for data breaches. So basically, if they get hacked and someone pulls money in your accounts because your information was exposed, you can't sue the lenders or the banks. It becomes your problem. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. And people say, well, that'll never happen to me. But look at Equifax. They had a massive data breach back in 2017. 150 million people's information was exposed. This is what happened to Equifax. Equifax left their database unsecure, like unlocked for 65 days. So these Chinese hackers got access for 65 days. And that's how they got a lot of information. People's names, social security numbers, date of birth, addresses, driver's license number. And people are saying... People are filing unemployment in my name because they put that information months later on the dark web where someone can buy your identity for like five bucks. Well, five bucks ain't much. You take five bucks times 150 million and the information stays on the dark web. It don't go away. It's like they, 100 people can buy your identity information. That's like 50 bucks or $5,000 or whatever. 500 bucks or whatever. But yeah, that's the way it is. I mean... <laughs> Yep, that's why you gotta lock all the. That's why you gotta put a security freeze in all these reporting agencies like Check Systems. They do uh, checking accounts so they can open an account in your name. A lot of people think, oh, I have bad credit. They can't use my information. It's not just credit, they can actually get an ID in your name. <laughs> get pulled over by the police here. My name is John Doe. Or fall, file false tax return in your name. It's not just about credit. People are like, oh, credit. It's more about credit, it's about identity. They get an ID in your name, file a false tax return in your name, open a checking account in your name, go out and run, write a bunch of bad checks, commit crimes in your name. You, you, their, their picture, but your information on the ID. A lot of stuff can happen, you know what I mean? Not just credit. People think, oh, this credit. Nope. Identity theft. They can use your ID with their, their name, with their picture, your information on it, get pulled by the cops. They can file a false tax return in your name. Look, and unemployment. A lot of people unemployment this, during this pandemic a lot of people said someone got unemployment in their name so there's much more to them just credit there's 13 reporting agencies out there too good freeze of three majors nope nope walmart and all them small places like you can go in there and buy a 1300 dollars phone or a 2000 dollars phone or whatever it is they pull from a small credit bureau it's owned by a big company even though the big credit bureau is frozen the little one's not and they're owned by the big credit bureaus. Yep. You got a consumer protections finance bureau.gov and look on there. They got a list of all the credit bureaus. And there's 13 of them, I think. 13, maybe a dozen. Yeah. Check systems. You got to freeze that company. And there's like Clarity Services, Sage Stream, Lexus, Nexus. There's so many of them. Because what happens. If they pull from a big credit bureau and you got them frozen, they'll pull from a small one. <laughs> That's how they do it. They're slick. They're desperate for money. They profit off your mistakes. Yep. Yep. So that's how it is. I mean, <laughs> mm hmm. They sure do. That FICO score, you know, back in the 70s, there wasn't a FICO score. Back then, you weren't even allowed to get a copy of your credit bureau report, but they made a law back in. The 80s, where you could get it, you could, where you could get a copy of your credit file. Back then, you couldn't. They just reported payment history. You know what I mean? Now it's like they they based everything on a number because of FICO created greed. Because everything you do now, they what's your FICO score? Your car insurance is based on your FICO score. Because they claim, State Farm told me this. They claim that when you apply for a loan, your interest rates high for bad credit and low for good credit. Same way with car insurance. They claim that people with bad credit or low credit score file more insurance claims when it's the other way around. So, 
Yeah. So now the insurance company's got in the credit game or the FICO game or we're going to base your rate on your FICO score. Yeah, so they all do that. So, you know, you get apartment. You get your FICO score. You got to pull your credit. You get a FICO score. You get a job. They pull your credit. And it's not credit. It's debt. They loop everybody in this credit crap, and it's actually debt. When banks pull your credit report, they say debt report. Yeah, so, yeah, it's all crazy. If you, if you, if you do the research, the whole FICO crap is meant to create greed for the lenders. So it's kind of crazy, but yeah. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and please hit that subscribe and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.